Good morning. So glad to see so many of us here today and still wearing our mask and social distancing. Thank you so much. I hope you received your order of worship as you're coming in the sanctuary. and You see the announcements that are on the back. Um, but we have a special announcement I wanted to uh, share with you today. And you may be wondering, too, what's all these, these pink ribbons around about the, the pulpit area today? We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. That's going to be something special uh, uh, in just a little bit. But Paige, I've invited her to come, if she would, and to share with us a special invitation that she wants to share from the children's ministry. Good morning, church. Um, this coming Sunday, August 2nd, we'll be having a uh, children and youth drive through ice cream party. Um, that will be for um, any of our children, any of our members or um, friends that have children. Um, it can be young ones too, but um, typically our ages are four, to t four years old to 12th grade. Um, if you would like to help, ways you can help would be um, coming in, helping and serve and be a soda jerk. I'll have the little hats um, available if you would be interested in serving. We'll be wearing gloves. These are prepackaged ice creams. Um, also, um, I will need some people to kind of greet and direct traffic um, as we kind of have our drive through. And I also was wondering if there's some people who would like to do some posters um, that we can put out in our yard and um, put out that say, like, uh, Gloucester Point Baptist Church misses you. We love you. Those kinds of things. If you're interested in doing a poster that we can place out in the yard, um, please see me. And otherwise, I'll see. Um, all the kids and youth um, this coming Sunday, August 2nd. Um, we'll be doing the drive through from 2 to 3. Thanks. Hey, 2 to 3 to come get some ice cream. I'll be here for that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll help and eat my part. So that's, that's wonderful. Thank you, Paige, and the children's ministry for just reaching out. Just want to connect to the best that we can. Uh, as we go to our morning prayer time, I'm going to encourage you to continue to pray for uh, Bonnie and Gary Ogden. Uh, Gary's at a specialty hospital in Richmond now called uh, Vibra, and uh, it's dealing with special infections. And so he keeps having this reoccurring infection, and we want to just lift him up in prayer. Others of our family members and, and friends are in special need, please continue to remember the Carmine family as we'll be having Donnie's uh, graveside service Tuesday morning for the family at Rosewell. Other family members are, are sick. Some family members now um, uh, are experiencing some, uh, some positive testing uh, from their job sites around the world. So please, please let's keep uh, praying for this virus and um, for the for, for the ice cream party, we want to lift, lift that up too. And also, there's a couple of churches uh, in the region that uh, opened up without any mask and was singing and different things have gone on in their congregations. And now uh, a couple of folks have tested positive, so they got to close the churches back down and fumigate and sanitize those churches. So if you would, please, please be in prayer for, for the churches too. Let's pray together now. Father, again, I thank you for your Son, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And we remember the precious words of Jesus from John 13, where he says that, that the love that we have for our brothers and sisters will proclaim to the world that we are your disciples. Through your indwelling Holy Spirit, we, we just humbly ask this morning to deepen our love for one another and to make us even more excited, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit, says Paul in Ephesians 4. Because Satan is now going to really try to be pulling us apart and telling us time to move on and don't pay attention to anyone, but we want to be listening to you, Father. You speak to us through your holy word, and we return that conversation through prayer. 
We lift up family members that are going to be having surgeries coming up and, and for decisions that need to be made. Help us to care for all, not showing any favoritism. Open, as the hymn says, the song says, open the eyes of our hearts that we may truly see the glorious hope glorious comfort from Christ. Holy Spirit, I just pray to teach us, to reveal to us, to empower us, to demonstrate the love of Christ, that it, we may be the, those that you use to strengthen the weak, to bind up the injured, to serve patiently, as we remember how patiently you served us. Help us to model your love that was so richly poured out upon us through faith in Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, help us to honor one another and so prove to be watching that others will see Jesus in us. We pray in the very close name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On this time of our service, we come to our special music, and uh, Kenny Man is going to come and bless us with some of his music. Kenny Man, come on. Jesus came to Bethesda's pool where the cripple did wait for the water to move a man who'd been lame for 38 years the question he asked him still rings in my ears Will thou be made whole? Will thou be made whole? Do you want a new life? Do you want a new life? Will thou be made whole? Will thou be made whole? And believe in Christ. Do you want to be white? Do you want to be white? As white as the snow. God's question to you. Will thou be made whole? Says there's no man to help me in the pool. Try to get up. Nothing I can do. Jesus said, Rise, take up thou bed and go. And by his faith, he was made whole. Will thou be made whole? Will thou be made whole? Do you want a new life? Will thou be made whole, thou be made whole and, believe and believe in Christ? Do you want to be white, want to be white as white as the snow? God's question to you, God's question to you will, will thou be made whole? Will thou be made whole? Do you want a new life? Will thou be made whole? And believe in Christ? Do you want to be white? As white as the snow? God's question to you. Will thou be made whole? 
God's question to you. God's question to you. Will thou be made whole? It's not what you have, but it's who you know. That determines where one day you'll go. You can have a fortune and lose your soul. It's not what you have, but it's who you know. Do you testify? Tell about his word. Make sure it's known. Make sure it's heard. Do you plant the seed? Do you pray and plead that before they die, they will believe? It's not what you have, what you have. but it's who you know, who you know that determines where one day you go. You can have a fortune and lose your soul. Not what you have, not what you have but it's who you know. You may have a house high on a hill, have the money to buy a field. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your money can't buy eternal life. It's not what you have, but it's who you know that determines where one day you go. You could have a fortune and lose your soul. Not what, not what you have, but it's who you know. It's not what you have, but it's who you know. Who you know. That determines where one day you go. You can have a fortune and lose your soul. It's not what you have, but it's who you know. Not what you have, but it's who you know that determines where one day you go. You can have a fortune and lose your soul. Not what you have, but it's who you know. It's not what you have, but it's who you know. Not what you have, but it's who you know. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny, man. That was beautiful faith singing, beautiful theology in that. Absolutely. How do you get to be a part of the family? How did Jonah get back in God's graces? How can you and I be in God's graces? Let's take our Bibles and turn to our parallel scripture reading for today. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning at verse 11. John, chapter 1, verse 11 through 15. He came to his own, and his own received him not, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, 
And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, again, as your holy word has reminded us that you are full of grace and mercy, we thank you that your promises are sure, they're dependable, we can lean on them. You are faithful, and we rely on you. Your word says that we will find joy in offering our time and talents and money to meet the needs of others. Help us to give freely, sacrificially, and cheerfully towards the work of your kingdom right here at Gloucester Point Baptist. May you cause the seeds that we sow to grow into that well watered fruitful tree of life. Father, bless us and keep us. We ask for your face to shine upon us and to turn our faces toward you that we may seek peace. Through the very strong name, Jesus, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. Today, I'd like to speak to us historically, biologically, and theologically. So we'll, we'll get it all covered here today. First, let me speak to us historically, if I may, just for a moment. As we go back and look through the pages of history, they're, they're filled with 
heartwarming stories of how people have overcome um, times of being down in their lives, whether it was an illness, finances, relationship, you know, any kind of situation, and how they have found their renewal uh, through Jesus Christ. Uh, the field of politics is by no means exempt. I have to tell you the story of Abraham Lincoln. You, you probably, I probably know this as well as I do, but let me see if I can get this straight. That probably no one ever descended deeper into the fish's belly than did Abraham Lincoln. He was defeated for the state legislature of Illinois in 1832. He was defeated for Congress in 1843. He was defeated for Congress again in 1848. He was defeated in 1855, or run for the Senate. And then in 1856, he was defeated as the vice presidential candidate. Then again, in 1858, he was defeated for the Senate again. He only won one election of the seven. You know which one that was? The presidency. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, six times he was rejected by voters. You know, how many times do we get all upset? So-and-so doesn't like me anymore, you know? Uh, six times they didn't like him well enough, evidently. But we know that he went on to become perhaps one of the greatest presidents in the country we ever had. I think Washington, to me, made us a country. Lincoln made us a nation. And we will be respectful of that. Let me speak theologically to you for a few moments now. Jonah that we've been studying. Jonah, Jonah lives on in history today because look, here we are in year 2020 and we're still studying Jonah. He lives today in heaven with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I think the truth was that picked Jonah back up, that got him back functioning in life is the same thing that's going to get you and me functioning again in life, and that's prayer. Prayer. No one can keep a praying person down. At Jonah's instruction, just by way of review from last week, he told the mariners there on the ship that the storm would calm down, that the ship would be saved, lives would be saved, if they would just throw him overboard and throw him out into the sea. And so after a period of time and the sailors trying to save the boat and all on board by rowing back to shore, they couldn't do it. They picked Jonah up and threw him overboard. And the minute he went into the water, the storm calmed down and it stopped. And then according to chapter 1, verse 17, the big fish came along and swallowed him up. And he's down inside the belly of this great big fish for three days and three nights. How would you like to be there? I love fishing, but I don't know if I love it that much. <laughs> you know? So many of us today, beloved, we need an escape from the problems, from the pressures that are coming upon us. So many of us, I think, long to be out of the fish belly of distress. And we're just searching for the way to come out of that throat, that binding of stress. Some of us remain there in that moment of that fish belly situation in our own lives for some time in order to learn some valuable lessons. It took Jonah three days and three nights before he learned his lesson. So let me ask us, how do we get out of a fish belly situation? When you're down in the depths and all is hopeless and you and I don't see any way out that we possibly can make this any better, 
How do we get out of a situation like that? Well, let's turn to the Bible again, always to the Bible. Read your Bibles. I cannot say that enough. Every answer that you have in this world, every confusion that you and I face, the answers are right here in God's holy word. We don't need to depend on precedents. You don't need to depend on preachers. Just depend on the printed word of God right here before us. So let's look at Jonah chapter 2 now, verses 1 and 2. Then Jonah, what did he do? Did he go fishing? Did he go complaining? Oh, the Bible says the third word, he prayed. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. And he said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I. And thou hearest my voice. So when did he pray? He didn't pray up on the ship, did he? He didn't pray when he hit the water. He prayed down inside the fish's belly. What did he pray? How, how did he go about praying? Do you and I know some Jonas who cry out to God in their distress, our distress, and God hears us and God delivers us? If you are a child of God, he will deliver you to his glory. So think about this just for a moment. When life is going well, and we are pretty happy, and we're pretty content with the way things are, we kind of take God for granted. You know, it's kind of like a cemetery. You, know, you don't think much of a cemetery until you need it. When you need it, then you think of it. Once you don't need it any longer, you don't think of it. Sometimes we treat God that way. Things are going well. Things are going good. I'm, I'm pretty happy. And, you know, I've said my prayer. I've said my blessing for the day. And we've gone on. But then we cry out to the God when we tend to lose hope. And sometimes God allows us to experience that pain and that hurt and that anguish and that palpitating heart and, and all these tears to get our attention back on him. Praise to our Lord that he always hears our cries. Look at verse 2. And he heard me out of the belly of hell. Doesn't matter where we are and doesn't matter what we're going through, he hears us. Now, notice that Jonah didn't say the belly of the whale or the belly of the fish. He said the belly of hell. This was no joy ride for him. He was inside this great big fish. See, the problem with calling out to God when we are just in fish belly situations is it damages our relationship with the Lord. It causes us to be inconsistent. It causes us to be up and down as if Jonah's in the belly of that whale. Listen, it wasn't just a straight line. It wasn't just a straight line. Can you imagine being in that fish's belly? And that, Jesus calls it the whale, and that, that, that fin going up and down, making propulsion, making that body up and down. Oh, my goodness. I can't imagine what that ride was like. I don't want to imagine what that ride was like. But when we only call on God when we're in pain and we're in confusion and we're not exactly sure what to do, then that makes our, our relationship inconsistent. And I, I think we see that in our own nation today. How many people today are calling on God's help? Why weren't we doing that before the riots and the protests began? Daily time with the Lord builds consistency. Daily spending time with the Lord will strengthen our relationship with Him, will make us spiritually stronger in our own lives. We can always call out for help. And that's what Jonah's experience is about now in chapter 2. It's a proclamation of hope. A proclamation of hope. Don't get hung up in the fish, in the whale. 
Don't get hung up in what he was experiencing and going through physically. This is a message of hope. Where do we find God in this message? So Jonah cried out in his distress, found deliverance, and you and I will too. The first step in getting out of the fish's belly is to call out to God in prayer. Notice again in verse 2. Well, verse 1, he says, Then Jonah prayed. Verse 2, In my distress I called, and he answered me. Jonah prayed from down inside the, the fish's belly. Beloved, it is never too late to pray. It is never too late to pray. So let me speak to you just for a moment biologically, since I have all the answers biologically. <laughs> you see all these markings that are here before us today. You see these, these pink ribbons up front. They are nine feet apart. All right. Now, if you look all the way back to the back wall here, you see those pink ribbons just to the right of the curtains. Everybody see those? From, from these pink ribbons on the front to that strip on the back, that's 20 feet deep. Now, where you're seated on the floor in the sanctuary, on those pews, up to that ribbon that goes across the pulpit up here, that's 15 feet high. Nine feet wide, 20 feet deep, 15 feet high. That's the size of the throat of a sperm whale. I'm preaching to you inside the throat of the sperm whale. All right? And the reason that we're using the sperm whale is that's the whale that is found in the Mediterranean Sea especially around the coast of Spain where, where Jonah was trying to run from God too, and around the coast of France there on the Mediterranean. Marine biologists have also determined that this large fish had enough air in its stomach that someone could breathe and survive, yet the temperature inside the belly would be 104 degrees. Well, we've survived 107, 105 heat index, haven't we, all this past week? This is the size, we think, of the throat, not the belly, the throat of the sperm whale, possibly the whale that swallowed Jonah. Now, some people say, well, how do you know it really was a, was a whale? And I've seen, I've read things all this past week where it was a, a, a boat named the fish. The fish boat came along and picked him up out of the ocean. He was down in the cargo hold of the boat called the fish. I read the Bible. I don't see that in there. I don't see any, any boats being named. Remember the, the fishing boat of Peter, James, and John? They're out on, on the Sea of Galilee. What they call their boat? I don't know. They just said, get in the boat. So they got in the boat. <laughs> this is a faith issue. Now let's talk theologically again. So as you look at these pink streamers, just think about being in the throat. All right, and the height of that, that whale. The Bible doesn't give us any more information about this big fish. Jesus called it a whale. We looked at last week in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. But I don't want us to get caught up in the biology. I want us to focus theologically, the study and the worship of our Lord God. That's why we're here, to study and to worship our Lord God. Jonah had little hope of ever getting out of that fish's belly. But in his distress, he did what he could do, teaching you and me to do what you and I can do, and that's to pray. That's to pray. No situation. No situation is too difficult for prayer. I want us to know this. It's impossible to come to God and to say, Our Father if we've never believed in him as our, our father, if we've never received Jesus as our Savior and Lord, how can we call on God and expect him to honor what we're asking if we're not a part of his family? That's what our parallel scripture was about. In John chapter 1, verse 12, Jesus says, Yet to all who receive him, to those who believed in him, he gave the right to become the children 
of God. Through prayer, we ask that God forgive us of our sins and that we believe in Jesus. And when we believe in Jesus, we are part of God's family. And no matter where we're in a fish's belly or whatever situation we're in, God will hear us. It's true now. We are all God's creation. Every single person, every living organism on the face of the earth is part of God's creation. But only those who trust in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord are the children. That's why Jonah can still pray to God. That's why you and I can still pray to him too. Even though Jonah was being disobedient to God, going in the opposite direction of where God wanted him to go, Jonah, remember, was heading 3,000 miles away from Nineveh. He did not want to go to Nineveh and preach repentance to that wicked city, as he called it. Yet, he still realized down in that fish's belly that God was his God. Beloved, we have to ask ourselves, what's it take for you and for me to realize that God is still our God? No matter what we've lost, what we're enduring, God is still our God. Some of us have gone our own way. We're making our own decisions. We're leaving the will of God. And what happens when we do that is that we get battered by the storms. We get swallowed up into fish belly situations. But here's the good news. Being God's children through faith in Jesus Christ, God is still our Heavenly Father no matter where we are. Beloved, if COVID-19 and all of these health restrictions are just weighing on your nerves and, and rubbing you the wrong way, then pray about it. Pray about whatever it is that's causing you to feel this way. Seek God's guidance. Seek God. Seek ye first his kingdom. And all the other things that we need will be added. So how did Jonah pray? Now here's a very important lesson I think that we need to kind of get in our mind. How did he go about praying? And he simply prayed the words of God himself. Eight times Jonah is quoting from the book of Psalms. Verse 2, look at verse 2 again. In my distress I called to the Lord and he answered me. Where did he get that from? That, that's Psalm 18, verse 6. In my distress I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. For his temple he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. Jonah is standing on the promises of God. Beloved, that's where you and I need to be standing, is on the promises of God. Jonah is praying scriptures. Let's look at verse 3 and 4 now. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, that the floods compassed about me, all the billows that and thy waves passed over me. That means he's on a rocking boat. It's not an easy, smooth sail. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. You see what he's saying there? I'll look again to thy holy temple. Those words are coming from Psalm 42. Jonah is praying the scriptures. Jonah has become a man of prayer. It's amazing what God can do to get us to be prayed. Beloved, I, I hope and pray that you don't have to go through an experience like this to become a person of prayer. I pray that today you and I will dedicate ourselves to already being prayer warriors and prayer seekers and any kind of other description we want to use. Verse, verse 4. Look at verse 4. I said I have been, I've been banished from your sight, yet I still, I still look again toward your holy temple. That's Psalm 31. So Jonah is praying. He's having a prayer meeting inside the belly of this well. He's already gone through the throat that you and I have just talked about and where I'm standing and preaching inside the throat. He's back there in the baptistry now, back in the belly of the whale. And he has a prayer meeting. Look at verse 5 and 6. Now just think about this. The waters. Now what water is he talking about? 
the water that's inside the belly of that fish. So you know how sweet that might be. The water is compassed about me, even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds, that's the seaweed. You ever been at the beach and had you standing out there wading in the water and all of a sudden something comes on and hits you on your leg and you go, whoo, oh, what was that? And just a piece of seaweed, you know? Sure. The seaweed, where's the seaweed there? It's wrapped around his head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was round about me forever. Yet hast thou brought my life from corruption, O Lord, my God. Jonah's having a prayer meeting. One pastor says, Jonah's praying inside the fish's belly. This is the first underwater prayer meeting held in the Bible. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> but his prayer meeting is, is not inside a beautiful, comfortable, air-conditioned sanctuary like Gloucester Point Baptist always has. Look at verse 5. The engulfing waters threaten me. I'm about to drown in the belly. And to make matters worse, all the stuff that's in his belly, all the seed weeds getting wrapped around me. That comes from Psalm 69. Jonah concluded his, his prayer meeting there in, in verse 6 by quoting Psalm 30. Oh Lord, you, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. So why do so many people stay in the fish's belly? Why is it that some people that we know, are? It, it's always drama in their life. It's always chaos. Well, I pray and bad things still keep happening. Well, if we pray and say amen and get up and grab the problem back and lay it back on our shoulders again, and we carry that same burden that we just prayed about, naturally God's going to allow us to be caught in the depth and have the seaweed all around our head. Beloved, call out to the Lord and leave it with the Lord. Jonah teaches us to pray, and he uses God's words in his prayer. Jesus, Jesus said this, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. John 15, 7. Our question today is, are we abiding in his word? God speaks to us today, beloved, through this written word. I believe in miracles today. I'll stand before anyone and say I believe in miracles. But if I want to hear God's voice, the quickest and the most direct speaking to me, this is where his voice is. It's in his holy word. My hope for this world, my world, is in God's word. And the way that I talk to God and share with him what I'm feeling and what I would like to do to, to help his kingdom to grow is through prayer. It's through prayer. This is God speaking to us. Prayer is us speaking back to the Lord. May we never be out of touch and out of prayer. So here's what I want to ask you today. Are you burdened? Now I want you to come to the Lord and pray this. Lord, you have said that you have borne my griefs and carried my sorrows, so I put my garment of praise on you. Are you lonely? Do you know someone that's lonely? Pray to the Lord. Lord, you have said you will never leave me nor forsake me. Do you do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you by the righteous right hand. The strength, our right hand, usually our dominant hand, is the powerful hand. But God is also saying, not by just my power, but I want to be with you. I want to fellowship with you. Call me and invite me to come in. And I will uphold you by my righteous right hand. Do you need forgiveness? Do you need forgiveness? Here's what we can pray. Lord, you have said that if I confess my sin, you will be faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So I claim that promise and I accept your forgiveness.
us. Pray, beloved, our hope is in Jesus Christ through prayer. Let's pray together right now. Holy Spirit, teach us and comfort us to know that blessings come from being obedient. Jonah had the word of you in his heart, but he was not willing to obey it. Blessings come in obedience to your holy word. And as soon as Jonah got back into your will, he was released. He was, he was set free from the bonds that enslaved him. No believer can be kept down when we pray. Jonah's attitude of faith shows us that there is, there is no such thing as a hopeless case. No matter how far we may have gone down, he can still call on the Lord in faith. And we will be delivered. Let us begin praying that sinner's prayer right now. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I admit that I have never believed in you as my Savior. I confess my sin and I repent this day for not believing you. Today, I believe that you did come down to this earth to save me from my sins. You died on the cross to take my place from all of my sins that I don't have to live in the belly of my situations. You covered all of that distress. I believe you have saved me. And I commit my life to you this day. You are my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Believers, pray right now to be renewed. Pray for the Holy Spirit to lead us to be consistent in our daily prayers and scripture readings. Then we will have God's power to bring glory to his kingdom. And if we have talked in beforehand and you are ready now to join our church and to be a servant, this is the day to do that. We can't be together at the altar, but we can sure be together through prayer and phone calls and talking one to another. I pray you'll answer the call of hope through prayer this day. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today.